In this short video, we're going to see how we can extend the method of variation of parameters to non-homogeneous systems of differential equations. Let's start with a complementary solution of our system x prime equals ax plus f. So we're only going to focus on the solution to the homogeneous equation. And we know that has a fundamental set, x1, x2, up to xn. And so if we take a linear combination of that fundamental set, that gives us the complementary solution. And from now on, we're just going to work with n equals 3. It's just going to make all of the writing that much simpler to understand. So we can rewrite this complementary solution as a matrix vector product instead of a linear combination of vectors. So let's take a look at what that means. So we are taking a constant times a vector plus a different constant times the next vector and a third constant times the third vector. And so let's go ahead and write out the vectors with their components. And again, here we're only using three components, but it could be 10 components or 2 million components. It's the same idea. All right, and let's go ahead and write that as a single vector then. So you just go across the first component there. I'd have C1, X11, plus C2, X12, and then C3, X13, and so on. And then we can recognize that as the matrix vector product, where we have the matrix is all of the components of the solution vectors from the complementary solution. And then the vector is just the coefficients, the c's. So the matrix, uh, from, which has all the components from the solution vectors, uh, we're going to call capital phi, or uppercase phi. And then we'll just use uppercase c with a vector of coefficients. And this gives us a very compact way of writing the complementary solution. It's just the matrix V times the vector C. And let me be careful and put an arrow about the complementary solution. OK. So the matrix phi is called a fundal, fundamental matrix of the system. And what does it mean to have a fundamental matrix? Well, uh, this is true for any square matrix, that phi is non-singular if and only if its determinant is not equal to 0. A fundamental matrix satisfies the homogeneous differential equation. So phi prime will equal a times phi. That makes perfect sense, because the columns of phi, at least the way that we made our phi, uh, were uh, solutions to the differential equation. But there are other fundamental matrices that do not have their columns consisting of solutions to the homogeneous equation. But those other fundamental matrices still satisfy the differential equation. And finally, uh, for our specific phi, the one that we just derived, the determinant of phi is the same as the Ronskian. All right, so let's remember the variation of parameters. The idea is that instead of having a constant parameter, you have a varying parameter. In other words, instead of a constant times f of x as being a solution, you want to say that a solution has the form of u of t times f of x. Well, we'll do the same thing with systems. Instead of having 
our fundamental matrix phi times a constant vector, we'll replace the constant vector with a function u of t. And that's a matrix, so it's a, a mat not matrix, it's a vector of functions. All right, so we assume our particular solution has the form of phi times u, which would mean that, now let's take the derivative carefully here. It's the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. I know that some people get uh, a little bit uh, sloppy with this equation, which is fine in Calc 1 or if you're only dealing with a single function, but here we have matrices and vectors and the order of multiplication matters with matrices. And so I have to have phi always coming first or phi prime coming first. Otherwise it doesn't make sense. If you said u times phi prime, that would be a, a meaningless operation, an undefined operation. All right, so now that I've got an expression for uh, x prime and for x, let's substitute those into our non-homogeneous system of differential equations. And so I've got x prime here on the left, a times x, and then plus f. Now remember that the fundamental solution satisfies the differential equation. So phi prime is actually a times phi. So I'm going to replace the phi prime on the left side with a times phi. And now, of course, I have a phi u on both sides. So I can subtract those off from both sides of the equation. And I'll be left with phi u prime equals f. Or, if I want to solve that, I would write that as u prime equals phi inverse f. And then, in order to find u, I would have to integrate u prime. And so I'd integrate phi inverse times f. So, let's just take a short detour and talk about matrix inverses. So there's no division by a matrix. The, uh, trying to write matrix division uh, is a senseless operation. But if you have a non-singular matrix, meaning its determinant is not zero, then it always has an inverse. So you think of this as maybe a function inverse. And it has the great property that the and A is the and A inverse are inverses of each other. So if you multiply A inverse times A, you'll get the identity matrix, or A times A inverse will give you the identity matrix. And so that means for a linear system, AX equals B, that's equivalent to saying X equals A inverse times B. So multiplying by the inverse is the same as solving the linear system of solutions. There is a formula for a two by two matrix inverse. And so uh, the formula is you're gonna take one over the determinant. So the determinant can't be zero if the inverse exists. And then you interchange the diagonal matrix, I'm sorry, the diagonal entries and you change the sign on the off-diagonal entries. So we're going to use this in the next example. Uh, and sometimes it is the most convenient way uh, to find the inverse or solve a linear system of equations. Um, now I say there's rarely a need. Sometimes it's just more convenient to compute the uh, inverse directly. Uh, but uh, to find the phi inverse f, let's just call that g, we would just need to solve the solution phi times g equals f. So we're solving a linear system. If we have a 2 by 2 system, it's probably 
as convenient or more convenient to use the formula. All right, so back to our problem at hand. We said that uh, we're using a variation of parameters. We said that our uh, x sub p, our particular solution, uh, should have the form of phi times a function u. We don't know what that function is, but we can use it. We can determine it by evaluating this integral. Once we have the function u, then we, we can find x of p by just multiplying by phi. And so we have a formula then for x of p. It would be phi times that integral. So our general solution then would be, uh, could be written in terms of phi by saying that, oh, I have my complementary solution, which is phi just times a constant. And then the particular solution is phi times some function u, which we determined to be a an value of this integral. All right, so let's do an example. We have a non-homogeneous system. So let's start with the homogeneous case. We're not going to go through the details, but we're going to have two distinct real eigenvalues. And we have their corresponding uh, eigenvectors, which means we can write out our two solutions. So x1 would be the vector 1, 1 times e to the power of negative 2t. And our second x2 is the vector 1, negative 2 times e to the power of negative 5t. So our fundamental matrix then would be phi of t equals, which is going to multiply out all those exponentials, so first row is e to the negative 2t, e to the negative 5t. And the second row is e to the negative 2t minus 2e to the negative 5t. And our f vector comes from the given differential equation. So let's go ahead and use that formula for a 2 by 2 inverse to calculate phi inverse. And so I'm going to have 1 over the determinant. So I've taken the product of the diagonals, subtracted off the product of the off diagonals. And then what did I do? Well, from phi, I swapped the diagonal entries. So now the negative 2e to the negative 5t is in the first row, first column, and e to the negative 2t is in the second row, second column. And then change the sign. That's all you do is change the sign on the off diagonal terms. Now this determinant I can multiply out and simplify. And so now the next step would be to multiply phi inverse times f and then integrate. So I'm going to leave this 1 over the determinant uh, outside of the matrix for now. I'm going to go ahead and perform the multiplication of the matrix times the vector. I still have the 1 over the determinant. So let me go ahead and multiply that term, that term into the matrix. And so now I have this or into the vector because this is now a vector. So this is uh, my vector phi inverse f. So uh, it's not a it's no longer a matrix. It only has one column. So the first component is 2t e to the power of 2t plus one third e to the power of t, and the second component is t e to the 5t minus one third e the power of 4t. All right, the next step would be to integrate phi inverse f. So the way you integrate vectors is component by component. So I would integrate the first component, integrate the 
second component, and then I would get a solution vector, or uh, the integral value would be a vector with two components. Now, uh, for the t e to the 2t, uh, t e to the 5t, you need integration by parts. I'm not going to go through all that detail. But here is what you get, which comes out of the integral. Now, I'm still not done yet. I still haven't found my u function, because remember, or I'm sorry, that is my u function, but I haven't found my particular solution. In order to find the particular solution, I have to take that vector which came out of the integration and multiply it by phi. So now this is my matrix. Maybe it's worth putting in a very thin line here. Oops. Probably kind of struggle to indicate that there are two columns in this matrix phi, but there's only one column here. Each column just has three terms in it. So we perform the matrix vector multiply, and we can see that there are like terms, there are constants, there are uh, t terms, and then there are e to the minus t terms in both the first and second components. So let's go ahead and collect the like terms. And now I have found my particular solution. So I get the general solution then. I can write it just as phi times c, that's the complementary solution, plus the particular solution.